Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat, and I got another rant for you today. As you can see across the bottom of the screen, the WNBA players opted out of their collective bargaining agreement, and they rolled the dice on themselves. Better yet, they rolled the dice on one player. But before we jump in, Thank you for your continued support of our channel. We greatly appreciate you. If you haven't subscribed yet, please be sure to subscribe right now. Pound that like button. Hit that bell. Get all the ups to the minute updates on what we are doing. And of course, if you don't know yet, I did start another channel called Rudy's Rant. And uh, check it out. We're going to be doing some different things over there. So please subscribe to that channel as well. And while you're at it, become a member of the Come On Now, the podcast family as we'll be dropping membership content only, coming soon and doing lives with just members. So please be sure to become a member of our family. We greatly appreciate you. We thank you so much for helping us get where we are today. Let's talk about this women, w, women's decision. This, uh, what they might think is a good business decision, but I think is overall an emotional decision based on one thing and one thing only. The WNBA Players Association decided to opt out of their collective bargaining agreement they think they deserve more. They think they've earned more. They think they should be paid better. They should have better facilities, better this, better that. They think that they are creating the future of the WNBA. Now, they might be right. But I'd venture to guess that, of course, they are banking on the momentum of, of this WNBA season. This WNBA season that has momentum because of one player and one player alone, that being Caitlin Clark. The WNBA was so desperate to, to put out strong WNBA Finals ratings that they colluded with, the, with YouTube TV to force men who don't, and maybe possibly women, who didn't otherwise want to watch Game 5 of the WNBA Finals, they forced them. The word is forced. People were not given the option in multi-view. They were said, you're going to watch WNBA whether you like it or not, whether it's in three screen or two screen, you're watching the WNBA as they did not give an option for football and baseball. Only WNBA and baseball, WNBA and football are all three of them. So you forced it, got Fugazi ratings that are bullshit and that everyone now knows are bullshit. And what do you have to say for that? You think that looks good? I mean, they might. I don't know. But their ratings went from game one at 1.2 million to game five at 2.15 million. I'm sorry, but I don't think they're doubling their ratings in a week because of a game five. Or going up to 1.7 in game four. Numbers magically jumped up pretty strong in game four. Now, I don't know if they did this same manipulation in games one, two, and three, but I can only venture to guess that they did and probably did it in game four because the numbers jumped up to 1.7, 1.8, or whatever it was in game four, and now you have it at 2.15. All that said, they are using metrics like higher ratings, higher attendance, franchise value, they fit, oh, a, a television deal that they didn't even get themselves that is basically a hand-me-down by the NBA to the WNBA as the NBA decides what the worth and the value of the WNBA actually is. So what you have is a bunch of metrics being used, and the main metric that's being ignored is that these metrics exist because of one singular player, Caitlin Clark. With all respect to the WNBA players, if they threaten a work stoppage or really decide to go on strike, they will end their measly, welfare, subsidized league. No one will care. There will not be anyone crying for them. No one will give a damn if they're marching in front of arenas, as there's only 12 to 15 players on each team. This isn't like football. This isn't the NBA. 
no one will miss the WNBA. And I'm obviously saying no one in the in, in the scope of most people will not miss the WNBA. Now, you can take that chance. You can roll the dice. The WNBA, C, WNBA PA, CBA points of emphasis, new economic model, better wages, current max salary is $252,000. In the, in the grand scheme of things, that means you're being paid two hundred and fifty grand to play three months a year, four, four months a year. I'd say that's pretty decent for a, for a league that doesn't actually turn a profit and has never turned a profit and is going to lose 40 more million dollars this season. But okay, you want a little bit of a bump? Okay. Professional standards, better facilities, consistency around the league. I don't know what the consistency is of, of the league in terms of facilities. I don't know what that is. I don't believe the league provides facilities for NBA teams. So what you're asking is that the league ensures that franchises provide facilities, facilities in which, lo and behold, the reality is if you don't make money, it's hard to build you a facility. Why would, I mean, for Christ's sakes, the Connecticut Sun couldn't, couldn't sell out the semifinals of their home building, and it seeks 10,000. But you expect the Mohegan tribe or whoever, they, wherever they play or whatever, whoever it is, you ex who do you expect to pay for this? Who do you expect to pay for this? There are still four or five teams that play in Band-Aid boxes. The Dallas Wings, the Atlanta Dream, the Chicago Sky, the Connecticut Sun, the Las Vegas Aces. That's five. The Aces play in a 12,000-seat arena and couldn't sell it out in the playoffs either. I think they say their number goes down to 10, 9, or 10. I don't know what it is. The reality is it's a half the size or almost half the size of any NBA arena. The only teams that play in the NBA arenas are, well, Seattle, because they had the arena from the Seattle Supersonics, um, the, the Sparks, the Mystics. Oh, no, I'm sorry. The Mystics play in a Band-Aid box, too. That's six. So half of your teams play in Band-Aid boxes. And when I say the Mystics and the Dream and the Wings, the Wings play in a 7,000-seat arena. The Mystics and the Dream play in arenas that seat less than 4,500. The only time those two teams didn't play in their shithole was when Caitlin Clark came to, down, to town to skew their attendance numbers. The, Liber the Liberty play in Barclays. The Lynx play at Target Center, for which they, they they curtain off the upper deck in the playoffs and in every regular season except for game again, except for Indiana Fever. Indiana Fever plays where the where the, the Pacers play. Who's left? Who's left? Uh, Mystics, Wings, Aces, Sky, Sun. I'm sorry. The Phoenix Mercury play where the Suns play. So half your teams play in box band-aid boxes. The other half play in um, NBA arenas. Where do you want your facility to be if you don't play? I mean, I, I believe that obviously, uh, I'm guessing that they have access to these NBA arenas if, you know, they play there and they have access to their facilities for practice, et cetera. But if you don't play in a place like that, it look. I, I read. I mean, I wrote Connecticut had nowhere to practice. Like they practice look like, looks like it's a darn recreation center or something like that. That's embarrassing. But you know where the Miami Heat used to practice for many many years before they practiced, before they built the the Kaseya Center, which was formerly the American Airlines Arena. They practiced at a high school. They practiced at a high school that was their camp facility. They would practice at a school named LaSalle High School in Coconut Grove, Florida. That's where they practiced. They had all their facilities there. So they practiced at a high school. Now, it's because all their facilities were at this high school. They didn't have the facilities at, at the Miami Arena. So why couldn't Connecticut work that out in their local area? It's not that complicated. But again, 
You're sure talking about better facilities. Okay, well, who's building them? Why don't the Dallas Wings play where the Dallas Mavericks play? Why don't the Atlanta, Atlanta Dream play where the Atlanta Hawks play? Why doesn't the Washington Mystics play where the Washington Wizards play? Or the, I mean, explain these things to me like I'm a five-year-old. Why do these teams not play in facilities that would make sense for playing professional sports? It doesn't make sense. Does it? No, it doesn't. Yet they choose to play in these Band-Aid boxes. The Chicago Sky, why aren't playing the United Center? It's not like any of this stuff cross, crosses paths with the NBA unless you get into the playoffs and then you'd have to figure out some scheduling things. But somehow, there are multiple teams that find a way to make it work. So you want facilities. Expansion to lifelong, lifelong benefits. I, I mean, I understand. You want insurance forever even if you played three years in the league. I, I get it, fine. You want something that's completely outrageous. Um, this is not professional football. I don't think anyone should have lifelong benefits in any professional sport outside of football and hockey. I'm sure MLB's got it because they have the best union in sports. And I'm sure that the, the NBA has it now. But the WNBA wants it. Why? Who's paying this bill? So what is your, I mean, what's the criteria for it? I, I understand that you want this, but if I have a job here and I leave here, I don't get lifelong benefits for working at X and when I go to Y. So you want to you wanna have lifelong benefits after you've left playing professional basketball because you played professional basketball? That doesn't make sense in any business. Now, I'm sure it exists in the three, in the, what is it, four major male sports. Baseball, basketball, football, hockey, yeah. I'm sure it does. I'm sure it does. Those those leagues also create revenue that provides profit. They make money. But I think that they would be doing they're they're risk they're playing with fire. I mean, listening to this, this is from NECA Agumake. I'm gonna go through what she said. NECA Agumake was the president of WNBPA. I guess they don't even call it the WNBAPA. They call it the WNBPA. Okay. She says, this is a defining moment, not just for the WNBA. This, the world has evolved since 2020, and we cannot afford to stand still. If we stay in the current agreement, we fall behind. Really? The world has evolved? Evolved into what? Last I checked in 2020, we, we had a country that was a, that was going through shit. We're in 2024. We still have a country going through shit. Your, your evolution is what? Your evolution is Caitlin Clark. Opting out isn't just about bigger paychecks. That's bullshit. That, that's a lie. Like, like that's literally the first thing that you want is more money. Otherwise, there's no reason to opt out, right? If you're happy with status quo on your pay, you don't opt out. It makes no kind of sense, right? Exactly. You're full of shit. It's about claiming our rightful share of the business we've built. I'm sorry, you didn't build shit. You didn't build shit. The NBA built your shit. If it wasn't for the NBA, you would cease to exist. See, it's statements like that that make that are complete jokes to me. The business we've built, I can I swear to you, Neka Gumuke, God bless you. If the WNBA did not exist tomorrow, there would be no one that would lose one ounce of sleep outside of probably a half a million people in this country. And there's 350 million people in the United States of America. You can hop back on a plane and go play in Europe, go play in Turkey, go play in Africa, go play in Australia, go play anywhere else. Go play in South America. Go play wherever you want. But no one, would, nobody would miss it outside of probably a half a million people in this country. Who would this? Your average viewership game was five hundred thousand a year ago. In fact, your viewership went down in the games that Caitlin Clark was not a part of this year. This year, your average viewership when she wasn't when she wasn't playing was three hundred ninety four thousand. 
Tell me what your viewership was on your local markets. I'm curious. Op I mean, improving working conditions. Okay, you got private planes now. You got charters now. Thank you, Caitlin Clark. Securing a future where we where the success we create benefits today's players and the generations to come. Man, you don't care about the generations to come. You care about yourself. I hate when people when players say we want to make a better tomorrow for future players. No, you don't. No, you don't. You care about yourself. You care about getting paid now because your career is coming to an end, and you want to get something out of it before you're done. I understand, but don't lie. You think the guy? You think the guys in the '80s, Bird, Jordan, Magic, Barkley, Akeem? You think they Isaiah? You think they cared about 2015? You don't think that Charles Barkley right now looks back at his check and watches guys making 60 million dollars who suck and doesn't nauseate him? You don't think Shaq, who at the time in 2000, what 1998? When he left, or whatever year it was, when he left, left the Magic to go to the Lakers, like you understand that, like Shaq would make sixty million plus a year right now. He made like fourteen, and that was crazy money back then. Something like that. He made something like that. I, I, I'm not giving exacts. Dwayne Wade's biggest check was like twenty two million, and Dwayne Wade retired like eight years, like. Five years ago, six years ago, whatever it was. Dwayne Wade's biggest check came after LeBron left, and it wasn't anywhere near max money because his knees were shot. Dwayne Wade never saw a $60 million check. Dwayne Wade is 10 times the player of a Jason Tatum or, or, or a, a Jalen Brown. 10 times the player. Like, what are we talking about here? So don't, don't tell me you care so much about the future. You care about now, and I get it. You want now. You're here now. The players playing now want now. I get it. We're not just asking for a CBA that reflects our value. We're demanding it because we've earned it. No, you haven't earned shit because your league doesn't make money. Your league does not make a profit. How have you earned something when you don't make money? You do not you do not produce profit. How have you earned it? By showing up? Come on. We're launching. You got you got a, an expansion team coming to Golden State ne this next year. And then you have two more in 26. And you and you I mean the little money that you've now gained from the 200 plus million that you're going to get per year, thank you to the to the NBA for TV rights. Half of it's going to get chunked up by these new players. Cuz you have to have more players, you're going to have 50, you're going to have 45 more players in your league. You're going to have more tr expenses in your league. What do you, how do you think that works? It's called money. Like this, the women of the WNBA are so unbelievably delusional. It's 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 embarrassing. Like, did you ever go to an economics class? And it's sad because Becca Gumake went to Stanford. Like, these, some of these women are supposed to be intel intelligent women who went to very well-known, great schools, whether it's Notre Dame, Stanford, Duke. I, I mean, uh, like, these are academic, very well-respected academics of higher learning, academic institutions of higher learning. And, and, and you don't understand basic economics, meaning if you don't make profit, you don't really exist. If a if if a, if a lawyer had a or a doctor had a practice and they didn't make profit for five years, they probably wouldn't be in business in five years, because they probably would have gone out of business in the first three. The players made the decision to opt out of the CBA of the last CBA to realign the business and save the league from its own limitations. The WNP and I can't even say. The executive director, Terry Carmichael Jackson, said today with a stronger foundation and new investments flowing in, they're opting out again. 
This time to fully professionalize the league, secure proper wages, improve working conditions, and lock in meaningful benefits. As a union, we serve at the behest of the players, and for them, this is all about business, their business. You know what? Part of your job, lady, is to actually educate these women on logic. And I'm not sitting here saying you shouldn't opt out. I'm saying there are risks attached to it. There are risks attached to you opting out, including the risk of the people that you have gained this season because of Caitlin Clark not giving a fuck if you opt out and go on strike. None of us will blink an eye. None of us will be impacted. I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm being honest. I watched the WNBA for one player. If that one player is not playing, I'm not watching. I watched the WNBA Finals, sure. I wanted to talk about it. And it was some of the worst basketball I've seen in my life, especially Game 5. I watched huge leagues get erased because people can't make layups. I watched opportunities to blow a game out, but you can't make layups either the other direction, while the other team just turned the ball over like a hot potato. I watched some of the worst officiating in the history of mankind at any level. I'd rather have a I'd rather have a Pop Warner referee than have the WNBA referees officiate a game I'm playing in in any sport. They suck, and they cheapen their game. Players are prepared to negotiate for as long as it takes. Union sources told ESPN's Chini Agumake, even <laughs> even if it means a work stoppage. All right, folks, who do you think Chini Ogumake's sources are? I'll, I'll, I'll let you guess. I, I, I'm going to take a wild shot in the dark, and I'm going to say that her sources are her sister. Her source is her sister, Neka Ogumake. They could have left that out and not put her name on that crap because it looks pretty obvious who the source is. So Neck is not telling her sister, but someone else is telling her sister? Man, please. With the historic 2024 WNBA season how, now in the books, we look forward to working together with the players in the WNBPA and on a new CBA that is fair for all and lays the foundation for growth and success for years to come. WNBA Commissioner Kathy Engelberg said in a statement, um... Oh, here we go. Here's Kelsey Plum. Remember how she's been complaining about money for quite some time. Other areas the union would like to see improved include salaries, retirement benefits, child care, and family. God. I I'm trying not to laugh at this. Family planning benefits. The, the, the same league that told D'Erica Hamby Kick rocks. Oh, K Kelsey Plum is on the vice pre first vice president of the WNBPA, who was a member of the team that told Dierica Hamby, "Kick rocks, because you're pregnant. Because we can't rely on you because you're pregnant." Yeah, that's 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 rich, man. All right, man, please. This isn't some sudden wake up call. It's the culmination of what we've been driving. Driving for over the last several seasons, Kelsey Plum said, we've played a key role in the league's historic growth, and now we're breaking free from the current system to demand full transparency and an equitable stake in the business we've helped build. They keep talking about a business they've helped build. They have not built shit. They keep talking about this business that they've helped build. They have not built shit. <laughs> like, the, the league has lost a quarter billion dollars or more, probably more, probably close to half a billion dollars in 28 years. The league has lost a half a billion dollars probably in 28 years. This is comedy. Here we go. Engelbert said at her State of the League address before game one of the finals that she is engaged with union leadership through the year. I sus suspect that given the transformation of the league that we've been working so hard on, building this long-term economic model, we've already returned to the players through charter, 
through increasing playoff bonuses a couple of years ago by over 50%, she said. So we'll continue to do that. And when we get to the bargaining table, we'll continue to talk about the issues that are most important to the players. Ladies, you are playing with fire. If you strike, people will not give a shit. Go ahead, strike. This could be the end of your league if you go on strike. I would highly recommend, as a view, a newer viewer of your sport, because of that lady named Caitlin Clark, that you don't go down that road of stopping work. If you stop working on a CBA that doesn't expire until a year, the next season, you are really risking all the momentum that has been gained by Caitlin Clark. Because you individually, as players, have not created anything. You have not created momentum. She created the momentum of this league. She did. Nobody else. She has that power. She had the skill and ability to get the NBA to cut you a bigger check. Because why else would they have cut a bigger check prior to her? They wouldn't, because no one watched your fucking league. I'm not being rude. I'm being real. Facts over feelings. And and don't let and and don't let the the, the WNBA owners, if they want to keep playing, don't let them go get scabs. Cause if they do. You won't have jobs. No one will care. We already view the product as trash. So what's the difference between X, Y, Z? They could bring 179 new players. As long as Caitlin Clark is on the Indiana Fever, we will watch Caitlin Clark play basketball. We won't care about the other 179. We don't care about them now for the most part. So why would we care then? Again, there's a half a million people out there that would care. The other 349 million, 500,000, have you got 350 million people in this country? The other 349 million, 500,000 won't give a shit. I think they're crazy. I, I, I mean, again, I'm not saying they shouldn't have opted out. But if they really consider a work stoppage and they try to go that route, I would call their bluff. And let's see how many of these ladies really will risk their basketball playing careers in the WNBA to go on strike on a league that has lost close to half a billion dollars and has never turned a profit, not one season ever. Try it. Fuck around and find out. I'd love to see you do it. I'd love to. The one thing about sports that makes me laugh is that if you don't have a powerful union, it's all words. There's only one powerful union in sports. It's baseball. It's the only reason that ba- baseball, because baseball has no salary cap. It's why Shohei Otani can sign a 10-year, $700 million deal and then defer 98% of it to after he retires because he's making 30 to $40 million a year in endorsement deals. It's the reason the Yankees can pay Aaron Judge four hundred million dollars, or three, I'm sorry, three sixty on nine years, forty million a year, and also pay Garrett Cole thirty six million a year, and also after this season pay Juan Soto fifty, forty or fifty million dollars a year, because there's no salary cap. They got to do the tax, a share of rev revenue, but. They don't don't have a salary cap. Every other sport has a cap. That's the powerful union. And their their contracts are all guaranteed. Football has nothing. They have no guarantees. They have the worst of all the unions. But they also know that if they go on strike, they're going to be replaced. It's been done before. It's been done before. 
they may not be replaced for a very long time because they'll all cross the picket line because that's what they always do. They're not powerful enough. And the WNBA, for every Angel Reese who's making two or three million a year in, 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 I'm saying NIL deals, in endorsement deals, you have 30 players who are making 70 grand, 80 grand. Who do you think is going to cross? Go strike. Show us. Show us that you have that gumption to do it. I want you to do it, in fact. I want to see that you have the fucking stones to go on strike, not work, and see how long that lasts. Because all you're doing is doing a favor to NBA owners who own your teams who are losing money hand over fist every single year on your trash product. And they'll have they'll finally have the reason and the ability to say, you know what? Cut this shit now. They'll have the reason now. They not, they, they'll have the ability to say, you know what, they don't want to work, then we don't have to have the league. I, I mean, you, you can't be serious. This is bananas to me. I get it. Everybody wants to make more money. I get it. That's life. That's the world. But when you sit here with a with a with a group of women who are saying about they earn something, I don't know what you've earned. Because if I'm the owner of your franchise, you haven't earned me a profit. So you haven't earned me shit. Do I think that the players should get some money in terms of jersey sales? Absolutely. It's their name. They should make money off their jersey sales. I don't know how much the NBA players make on their jersey sales. But if the WNBA players don't make money on jersey sales, that absolutely should change. And they should absolutely get paid on jersey sale money. For sure. Kate Martin, I mean, my God, being fourth in jersey sales, probably would have doubled her salary this year if she got money off jersey sales. Obviously, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese would have made a fortune. But if that's if they don't make any type of money off that, then yeah, that's one thing that absolutely should change, and I do agree with them in that regard. A percent, they should get a percentage of their jersey sales for sure. But you want a raise? I mean, you get them. I mean, I, I'm not saying they shouldn't get a raise. I'm not saying that they should have some type of marginal raise, mar, a structural raise increases. I'm not saying they shouldn't have that. They should. But you want to strike for that? Or you want to negotiate the right way? Because this isn't the freaking longshoremen who control the the the, 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 the shipping of goods <laughs> into the United States and who can literally destroy, you know, you know channels of, of, you know, tra- you know, whatever you call it, goods, the, the, tra- this, the, the, the movement of goods and services, the goods in this country. No, there's another word for it. They don't. They and that strike ended in like four days. Like it didn't last very long because the U.S. government knew what was going to happen and they couldn't. Yeah, there were some phone calls made. Can't destroy the country three, three, four weeks before an election. I get it. But this is bananas. And I've, if I'm repeating myself, I'm trying to think of other things that I that are in my brain that I've not, not said yet. But I'm sitting here like, bro, these these ladies really have some. If they want to go with, go through with this, try it, try it. I promise you. I promise you. There's a lot more women that are making bullshit money in the WNBA who are, do, are not making endorsement deals, who don't make any money from anywhere else other than they're playing in the WNBA, who don't even play overseas, who will be the first people to say, "Fuck this. I'm not. I'm not striking." Mixed martial arts has tried to have a union forever. It'll never work. They're individual, independent contractors. And you know what happens there with independent contractors? They only care about themselves. They know, they know that if they're good, they'll get paid. They don't care about the guy who doesn't get paid. They care about themselves. They work. They put their time in. They don't want to risk their check over someone who's not that good of a fighter. So they're never going to freaking go on, go join a union. That's why this whole thing with the UFC has been a complete colossal joke. Every time they talk about unions, unless you get your 10 champions to say, yeah, I'm joining this union, your union's dead. There's no chance for a union. Now, that's not the case for WNBA. They have a union, but they have no leverage. With a, you, you need leverage. And leverage would be that we have 15 million people watching our game every day. Leverage would be we average 10 million fans a game. 
Hell, leverage would be that we average 3 million fans a game watching. And all of our arenas are sold out. That's not what's happening here. It doesn't exist. You got six teams that still play in glorified small college venues. The Miami Hurricanes play in its 7,500, 8,000-seat arena. It's bigger than four of the WNBA arenas. The Mystics, the the Dream, the Wings, three, sorry, three. It's bigger than three of them. Are you kidding? Are you kidding me? Uh, I mean, hey, if you want to, if you want to use, and then I saw, I'm sorry, I, I missed the paragraph here because I was reading the, the, the quotes. They're citing higher television ratings, Caitlin Clark, attendance figures, Caitlin Clark, franchise values, Caitlin Clark. The union said it's the time is right for rene- renegotiating the league and the owners and owners. The league also recently entered into a historic 11-year media rights deal with Disney, Amazon Prime, and NBC for 200 million a year. No, they did not. The NBA did. ESPN can't even tell the truth. The NBA did. The NBA entered into this this deal. And the NBA gave their mon- the money that they allocated to the WNBA for this. So, yeah. All these things that you cite are a direct correlation to the one and only Caitlin Clark. And you're banking on the player that you try to take out to get you a better deal. It's so ironic. The, the comedy of it all. The woman who got you these numbers, who make you feel so emboldened to go and say, we're going to strike, is the same woman that y'all every single game tried to take out. The same woman y'all tried to dismiss, disrespect, talk shit about. I mean, it's insane. But hey, welcome to the, the land of the WNBA. That's all I got. This is Rudy's rant. However, coming on the podcast, facts over feelings. Again, if you have not subscribed yet, please go subscribe right now to this channel and jump on over to Rudy's rant on YouTube and subscribe over there too. I thank you so much for your continued support of this channel. Facts over feelings. Come on now.